For decades, Voyager 2 drifted silently through the void, a ghost ship in the stars, slowly fading from memory. Most assumed its journey had become symbolic, a relic of scientific ambition from another era. But that changed the moment it crossed the outer edge of the solar system. Suddenly, it wasn't just returning scientific data. It was transmitting something else, a structured signal, subtle but deliberate, that aligned too perfectly to be random. And then came the silence. What Voyager 2 encountered at the boundary of our solar system wasn't just a change in radiation or magnetic fields. It was a threshold, sharp, instant, and unnaturally precise. A cosmic gate that, once crossed, confirmed our worst suspicion. The universe is not empty, it's structured, and we've just stepped outside the safety of our cosmic home. Voyager 2 was never supposed to last this long. Designed for a five-year mission, it has survived 47 years in space. It battled radiation, dust, freezing temperatures, and the immense silence between planets. And yet, in 2023, it sent something back that has scientists more confused and afraid than ever before. Just after crossing the heliopause, the supposed end of the sun's domain, Voyager 2 registered a sudden and massive shift in plasma density and radiation. But this wasn't a gradual fade-out. The data changed almost instantly, as if Voyager had crossed from one room into another. The probe also detected a strange burst, a low-frequency transmission, repeating in a structured, rhythmic pattern. Not a natural fluctuation, not random noise. This was organized, intelligent, almost like a handshake or a warning. Engineers at NASA weren't just surprised. They were shaken. And for the first time in decades, Voyager 2 wasn't just a scientific instrument, it was the center of a mystery. For years, textbooks described the edge of the solar system, the heliopause, as a fading gradient, a blurry edge where the solar wind slowed and finally mixed into the galactic medium. But Voyager 2's data destroyed that idea completely. Instead of a gentle transition, it recorded a wall, a sharp, undeniable jump in particle energy and temperature. One moment, it was inside the heliosphere, protected by the sun's magnetic influence. The next, it was outside, bombarded by raw cosmic rays at levels 70% higher than before. The data didn't ramp up. It snapped, like a border, like a shield. And then came the alignment. Voyager's magnetometers showed that the sun's magnetic field was almost perfectly aligned with the interstellar magnetic field just beyond the boundary. Scientists had expected chaos, turbulence, a clash of opposing forces. Instead, they found order, precision, a pattern that suggests these fields might not be meeting randomly at all, but perhaps by design. The most haunting revelation didn't come from radiation or particle readings. It came from the communication stream itself. While reviewing archived telemetry, a group of researchers noticed something buried in Voyager 2's background carrier wave a subtle modulation that pulsed just outside expected parameters. At first, it was dismissed as sensor noise, but over time, a pattern emerged. It wasn't caused by the sun. It didn't match any known cosmic event. Instead, the frequency repeated with mathematical precision, using intervals that mirrored portions of the Arecibo message humanity sent into space in 1974. It was as if the signal was echoing back, not word for word, but structurally, recursively, and it began shortly after Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause. The timing was too perfect, too clean, and too familiar. The idea took root. What if the moment Voyager stepped outside our sun's protective bubble, it was scanned? Some scientists now believe the signal may not be a message at all, but a kind of automated trigger, like a sensor alerting something, or someone, that another civilization had breached a cosmic perimeter. What Voyager 2 revealed wasn't just a static wall. It was something more complex, something that shifts. The boundary between solar and interstellar space isn't always in the same place. It expands, contracts. It reacts to solar flares, cosmic events, and possibly to us. Some astrophysicists now describe the heliopause not as a shell, but as a membrane, a living boundary that breathes with the sun's cycles and pulses with galactic pressure. It changes shape depending on where you cross it. Voyager 1 met it at 119 astronomical units, 
Voyager 2, just two astronomical units further, recorded very different conditions. That difference may not be random. It might be intentional. If space isn't uniform, if the heliopause behaves like an intelligent barrier, then Voyager 2 didn't just cross into space. It crossed into something's awareness. And that raises one final terrifying possibility. What if the outer solar system is being monitored, not by a physical entity, but by a field? A system that records when civilizations grow powerful enough to leave their star's domain, and then decides what happens next. While the public remained largely unaware of the strange signal Voyager 2 had detected, behind the scenes, space agencies across the globe were entering a silent state of alarm. Multiple scheduled press briefings were suddenly postponed. Researchers who had worked on the Voyager mission for years were abruptly reassigned. At JPL, the team monitoring the probe was no longer permitted to speak directly with the media. Something had changed, not in the data, but in the tone. Internal memos, later leaked to a group of independent astronomers, revealed that a portion of the signal had been classified by the Department of Defense. This was no longer just a NASA anomaly. It had become a matter of national security. Why? Because the frequency embedded in Voyager's transmission shared characteristics with a previous classified event. An unexplained signal recorded in 2003 by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. That event had also been dismissed publicly, until now. And for the first time in decades, Voyager 2's data stream was being encrypted. That decision alone told the scientific community everything it needed to know. This wasn't about protecting data. It was about containing fear. As more scientists began reviewing the raw data from Voyager 2, unofficially and often from within anonymized online communities, one theory began to gain traction. They called it the mirror theory. According to this idea, the structured signal Voyager 2 received was not a message, not even a reply, but a reflection. A passive, automated response generated by a system built to echo the identity of whatever touches it. Think of it like sonar in a vast ocean. But instead of returning sound, it returns structure, logic, language. Voyager 2's signal patterns, especially the ones mimicking the Arecibo message, might not have been copied by another intelligence, but reflected back to us by a field that recognizes self-replicating systems. A filter, not a consciousness, a mirror. And that would mean the most terrifying part is not what it sent back, but what it didn't. Because a mirror doesn't lie. It just shows you what you already are. And maybe, just maybe, what it saw in us was too familiar. Beyond the heliopause lies the great unknown, interstellar space. But what if it's not empty? What if it's not just space? A group of astrophysicists, working with AI-powered pattern recognition models, began mapping Voyager 2's trajectory in relation to ancient celestial alignments. They found something shocking. Voyager's exact exit point aligned with multiple repeating fast radio burst sources, strange high-energy signals from deep space that have no clear origin. These FRBs had always puzzled scientists. But now, with Voyager 2 drifting nearby and transmitting its own mystery, the dots began to connect. What if those FRBs weren't just anomalies? What if they were tracking signals, scattered across the galaxy, designed to detect when something crosses a threshold? Voyager 2 didn't just pass into deep space. It may have entered a monitored corridor, one that doesn't emit signals but records them, one that doesn't respond until something wakes it. And now, we have to ask, did Voyager trigger something? Or did something finally open its eyes and look back? The final, and perhaps most disturbing, theory isn't about physics. It's about perception. Some quantum theorists now suggest that what Voyager 2 encountered was not just a spatial boundary, but a cognitive one. That there exists a limit in the universe, not of distance or time, but of awareness a threshold beyond which only civilizations capable of perceiving higher-order information are permitted to cross. Cross too soon, and you trigger a failsafe. The hum Voyager 2 transmitted, the strange alignment of magnetic fields, the symmetrical pulse patterns, all of it may point to one thing. We've crossed into a layer of space designed to filter intent, to detect what kind of intelligence we are, not because we're special, but because we're not alone. Voyager 2 wasn't just a probe, it was a key, and now that it's turned the lock, 
something is listening. For nearly half a century, we looked at Voyager 2 as a symbol, a time capsule, drifting peacefully through the unknown, carrying the best of who we are to whoever might be listening. We never imagined that something already was. The transmission wasn't noise, the shift in space wasn't coincidence, and the silence that followed wasn't peace. It was calculation, because Voyager 2 didn't just leave the solar system. It crossed a boundary that wasn't meant to be crossed yet, a line not drawn in distance, but in understanding. A cosmic filter, invisible until the moment we stepped through it. And suddenly, the universe blinked. We weren't met with a voice. We were met with a mirror. And what it reflected back wasn't approval, but recognition. A subtle, structured pulse that confirmed our fears. We were never alone. We were just not ready to be seen. Now, Voyager 2 drifts beyond the known, watched by something we don't yet understand. Not a ship, not a being, but a presence. Quiet, calculating, and possibly very, very old. And the only question that remains is, what happens now that it knows we're here?